All righty. Well, hey everybody, Dr. Bulow here, and uh, and I'm. It's funny. I'm used to saying "Welcome to Around Cranberry Township" because yeah. I have this interview show for local businesses and service professionals, and I'll probably share this video to that one. So, hello everybody <laughs> in the Around Cranberry world. But today, I'm just talking to you as Dr. Bulow, um, and today I'm with. Doctor, is it Dr. Andrew Dulac? Yeah. Do you have your doctor yeah, of physical I do therapy? Have doctor of physical I do have doctor. And that's therapy. what I assumed about Andrew when I first met you. I thought, I, I thought for sure you had your doctorate, which I think is phenomenal. Um, but uh, but yeah, like I was just talking to Andrew about just a lot of things, you know. Yeah. And one of the things that I've been trying to work around is how to package some of these videos. And I have a podcast uh, called "Staying Connected with Dr. Bulos." You can check it out. I'll plug that. And that's just about life in general, kind of like deep, deep thoughts, you know, if you remember those uh, things back yeah. in the day of Saturday Night Live. But it mm -hmm. is about just life lessons that I've learned that I'm really passionate about. But the other thing I'm passionate about, obviously, is health and performance. And it's all kind of under this umbrella of just trying to get the most out of life, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Oh, yeah. And so I think I've been fortunate in, in, in maybe you feel the same way as clinicians to integrate with and meet other clinicians and we kind of have an inside view mm -hmm. of maybe that's what we'll call this eventually the inside view you know <laughs> an insider's look yeah. at or behind the curtain of really healthcare. yeah you know what i mean absolutely because and, uh, we i mean you know a lot of the cervical spine and um different aspects behind that but we all have a wealth of knowledge that we can it. share with each other to really help the community. I yeah. mean, that's what we're all about when we get into this profession. 100% is just trying to, and I think it's funny as providers, sometimes we get in our niche mm -hmm. and we focus on what we do so much we don't see the other community. At least that was us because we're really hyper focused and so we're kind of mm -hmm. in here. And then also, you know, there's some chiropractors that are catch all, kind of do a little bit of everything, but then we niche down so much in upper cervical and we really respect our work that we kind of get this tunnel vision. Yeah. Um, but I do think that is the future of quality healthcare, is owning what you do, being the very best at it, but then starting to look and learn not to do it, but to integrate it in and to say, you know what, Mary, I think you're going to need to go see yeah. Andrew, or you're going to go see Dr. Karski, you're going to go see Dr. Rhodes, or you know, work on different doctors and therapists in the region. Shout out mm -hmm. to everybody there. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. you know, just to get the best out of patient care yeah you know, I, best I, results you know absolutely i think the team approach is the big thing you know everybody's totally um i'll reference athletes but they all have their teams in their corner working with them you have the athletic trainers physical therapists chiropractors nutritionists yeah um everybody just point. driving that yeah. uh, for maximum performance and living life and um now as we get going here and we're going to talk about a whole bunch of different things andrew has a book called uh better back more living, I love that. Um, we love the spine, you know, yeah. very spine centric, and we know it's important. But I know you also have a background in golf, and so like, mm -hmm. what's the what's the you know thirty second you know one minute intro to Andrew Dulac? Like, how did you get started? Where are you from? What are you passionate about? Who do you help? That kind of stuff. Yeah, so real quick, I'm from Williamsport, Pennsylvania, home of Le Little League World Series. So uh, we're are. on oh, TV cool. right. two weeks a year. But I was yeah. a personal trainer back up in uh, Syracuse, New York. I uh, had a pretty exclusive gym, oh, cool. and I really liked it, but it was almost a transitional uh, personal training gym where people had surgery, mm, we had yeah. great relationships with surgeons, and they would send us patients after they did traditional physical therapy, and we helped them get back to 100%, and it was really cool, but at the same time, I didn't understand, because I wasn't a physical therapist yet, um, I was a personal trainer, I didn't understand what did the surgeon do and how did the body move? Got so it. the underlying stuff behind it. Yeah. So then I the, it created a desire to go back to physical therapy school to learn the inside approach to healing. And um, then I became a physical therapist. I went to University of Pittsburgh, um, best school in the country for physical therapy. I don't know if you knew that. I went to a year, a year at Pitt. Not yeah. a PT program, but I like the school in general, yeah. Yeah, so... Um, then I just absolutely love that approach, uh, physical therapy, getting people back to normal. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's kind of how I got to be a physical right. therapist. And then how'd you get into the golf world? I know you work with uh, golf golfers in general, yeah. but that's kind of like one of your niches is really helping golfers perform at a high level. Did you golf yourself or you have a lot of patients that were golfers or how did yeah. that come about? So I, it's quick story is um, I wasn't a golfer. I loved every other sport, uh, baseball, basketball, football. 
but after I graduated from PT school, I wanted to play a sport that I could play now in when I'm 80, 90, or maybe even 100. That'd be awesome. Yeah. So I picked up golf. I thought I was doing pretty well. I was shooting, uh, if you're a golfer, shooting like 90, 95, or 100. What's par? Par 72 typically. On, it. it depends okay. on the golf course. But So I was shooting 90, 95. Uh, sometimes 100, which wasn't all that great, but I was enjoying the game of golf with my family and friends. But I wanted to get better. So I took a bunch of lessons. I got custom golf clubs, which they're not cheap um, <laughs> if you go that route. But, um, so, but it really didn't help my game. Maybe it shaved off a couple strokes. So maybe I got down to like high 80s, low uh -huh. 90s consistently but i knew there sounds was... pretty good to me I don't know. <laughs> it's so bad <laughs> it, it's, it's decent like you can yeah. enjoy a round of golf by shooting yeah. that but yeah. i wasn't satisfied so i did a lot of research as you, probably you if you're mm -hmm. looking into something you do your own research sure. right yep. uh so i started doing my own research and found that there's a different approach to improving your golf game so instead of looking at your uh, swing plane, so how your club goes back and forward, it starts with looking at your body. Find out what your limitations are. So I did that to myself, and I had an old history with a left hip issue with football. I took a helmet right to the hip, sidelined me for a couple weeks, yeah. and I never addressed it. I was young, I could push right through it, but I had this left hip issue. Yeah. I never knew it. Went to this uh, certification, uh, Titleist Performance Institute out in Philly. Uh, did a course, they identified it right away. And once I started working on it, within four weeks, I shaved off eight strokes off my game, wow. which was phenomenal. So now I'm shooting like 82, yeah. which golfers, you know, shaving off eight strokes was kind pretty darn deal, good. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then I started believing it and I did it to my friends, my family first. Mm -hmm. And then I started this company. That's really cool. Yeah. Now I have to, for you golfers out there, and this is totally, not fully appropriate right now, but I'm gonna just say, share a joke because it just, you know, I just have to, and this is this is my page. This is, you're just gonna get Dr. <laughs> Bulow. The, uh, I had a, I celebrated 10 years in practice last year, and I, I was telling my patients, I said, you're just getting, what did I say, full on Bulow. I said, you're not, there's no filter. You know, you're just gonna get my personality. But yeah, there's so, so there was, um, oh, now I'm gonna, now I'm gonna ruin the joke, but there was, <laughs> there was this, uh, this wife and husband that got in an argument. You know what I mean? And it, it got heated. And, and unfortunately, he actually ended up killing her. And um, it was pretty sad, you know. And, he, and he, the, you know, the police came and said, what happened? He goes, I don't know. I was in a, I was a fit of rage. You know what I mean? They saw the body and they saw golf clubs. And they said, did you? And he said, yeah, yeah they were, we were arguing. And I used my golf clubs. And it was, it was a mess. And they said, well, how many times did you hit her? He goes, I don't know, six, <laughs> seven times. Well, Mark beat out for six. <laughs> so it's not a good joke. But uh, I heard it once upon a yeah. time, and I figured if there's golfers watching this, which hopefully they will, because we'll talk about yeah. this, um, they might appreciate it. But anyhow, um, so yeah, I personally, I, I never played myself. My grandfather, he recently passed away, 97 years old. One of his passions was golf. Mm -hmm. And he was an engineer. And, you know, I've come to appreciate the work that we do in upper cervical is very much an engineer's game. It's very calculated. And I'm, I'd like to think maybe I got a little bit of that from him. He was a, a, a civil engineer, built bridges and whatnot. And I was just going through his library and it's just, I mean, <laughs> thermodynamics and hydro pressure and the strength of materials and like, you know, all these different engineering books. But anyhow, I can see why golf is in, in, is in a large part an engineer's mm -hmm. game. Because when you look at the structure of the body, when you look at gravity, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And he would talk about pretending that your head, I'll never forget this again, this is like two golf lessons with him as a 10 year old. So it's going way back and I don't know how good of advice this is. <laughs> you tell me. But it, it, he talked about pretending like the head is suspended by a string in space. You know what I mean? And you're just always keeping your eye on the ball and then all the basics. But it was, it all started with that approach, I guess you yeah. guys call it, you know? And here's what's interesting. And let's, I'd love to talk about what are some of the main hiccups that you see in golfers, because what from my perspective, and I've taken care of a couple golfers, yeah. one of the one of the blind spots is actually the weight of the head on the neck because of that, right? Mm -hmm. And and in as Andrew and I probably know, and some of you may or may not know, the cerebellum, which is in the back of your brain, controls your posture a lot, right? Mm -hmm. It's your subconscious postural tone, and what a lot of people don't realize is that 
your neck, because it's so mobile, has a ton of feedback into the cerebellum, the, the, the suboccipital muscles. You know, if you feel like you have a toothache right at the base of your hairline here, there's a, a, a strain on either the joints or the mm -hmm. muscles in that area. But what that does is it barrages the cerebellum with, with unequal or disaffrontated input into the cerebellum. And then as a consequence to that, the cerebellum does not regulate our postural muscles as well. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, and I have a guy I take care of who I'm trying to get, and I think he is going to be contacting you, who's a power swinger. He's yeah. a power golfer. Mm -hmm. uh, or at least he's gone to these competitions and he can crank a ball. Yeah, long drive competition uh -huh. probably, yeah. But when he comes in, his hips are off. Mm -hmm. Like a good three-eighths of to a half of an inch. Like a big, big deal, right? And a lot of that drops down when we rebalance his head. And he ends up breathing better just because, like we talked about, like lower brain stem, ENT kind of mm -hmm. issues. So for me in my world, in, in the world of golf, our, our goal is to balance someone's posture. And actually, we take like a top-down neurological approach. Um, and the only really way someone would know that that's an issue for them is probably... Like I said, having like a toothache feeling in mm -hmm. here, having like a strain down in here, maybe the headaches, dizziness, vertigo, acid reflux, like all of that's like lower brain stem kind of presentations. And that's just our world. What do you see mm -hmm. from, a, from a whole spine, physical therapy, you know, past injury? What are some of the major like blind spots? Because I think most people will kind of know to self-evaluate and Google certain things, but there are blind spots. Like no one would think up here could dictate our posture and balance. Yeah. What are some of the things when you're working with people that they go, oh my gosh, I didn't even realize that. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just kind of curious. Yeah, so uh, there are three big ones that I see with golfers. Um, two are stiffnesses or lack of flexibility. Mm -hmm. uh, first one I would say is the sneakiest are the hips, the yeah. hips, because exactly what we're doing right now, we sit a lot. Yeah. In society, yeah. we sit a lot. Yeah. And yet... It's the and, new smoking. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, right? <laughs> Sitting yeah. is not the best for our health. Mm -mm. So we sit a lot, and we walk, and we do basic stuff forward and backwards. But in the golf swing, it's a lot of rotation. Mm. Tell me, when do we actually rotate our hips um, twisting-wise, right? Yeah. And well, now, it, do people, I'm curious, in the golfing, you maybe say, proper form do you round the back or are you really trying to keep that lower back nice and vertical and hinging at the hips when you rotate through yeah so uh, you have to which is the proper way you have to actually find what allows you to move the best so right. it's not a flat back it's not a curb back you have to be right in the middle between it because in order to reach optimal rotation you have to decrease any force either way mm. so a neutral lower spine and a slight curve of the upper body, Got it. actually. Because what, what I see, and what I'm sure you know or are well aware of, when we say a neutral lower spine, it's sitting or standing erect with kind of your butt out and the lower back or the belly kind of forward where you have this lordotic curve where it's kind of curved towards the belly. And where most people get lower back injuries is when they're rounded forward where they're kind of like hunched over mm -hmm. and rotated. So it's like, you know, you have a big giant UPS box next to your shoe, you rotate, you flex, mm -hmm. and then you go to pick it up and you go, ah, mm -hmm. I can't move. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm curious about golfers, if that's an occupational hazard, if there, are, if there is a lot of that, if you have to swing through, mm -hmm. but what you just said is a little neutral low back, yeah. so that saves that, so it, yep. you know, but with a little bit of rounding of the thoracics, because that yeah. naturally does do that. Yeah, so that's cool, that's yeah. very, very cool. So that's a big one. Like he, uh, Dr. Brulo really hit it. Like the lower back, you got that little lordotic curve, that mm -hmm. um, slight curve forward. But um, the glutes have to be firing, the butt muscles are have to be firing, and your lower portion of your ab muscles to stabilize all that spine, right? Got it. So yeah. that's actually the second one. So the first one is a hip mobility. So can you twist your hips? Which I will tell you that a lot of people have problems twisting their hip enough to allow for a golf swing. And when you say the hip mobility, are you talking about the actual acetabulum hip socket or are you talking about L5 sacrum, like low back rotation? No, acetabulum. And so gotcha. where the yeah. leg bone meets the pelvis or yeah. hips, that has to be able to twist yeah. um, approximately 35 degrees inward and outward mm -hmm. for the golf swing. Just depends on if you're right-handed or left-handed, but 
about 35 degrees both ways. Yeah. So that's kind yeah. that's a lot. I was going to say to put it into perspective because my blank stare is I don't know <laughs> what the normal range is of most people. So where where are most people when they come in to see you? What is their average hip rotation amount? So uh, if you cross your legs, that's external rotation, okay. lateral rotation. So if you cross your legs and you can get your ankle onto the opposite knee, mm -hmm. that's sufficient enough. That's about 30, 35 degrees. But now is it, if I, if I cross and I have my knee flat, is that 90 or is that the 30 at the hip level? That's about 50, 45, 50 Got because it. of how much you're changing Down the there. hip. Yeah, Got so it. that's Fair about enough. 40, 50 right there. I can do more with my right than the left. <laughs> yeah, right? Most people do. We always yeah. have limitations that yeah. way, right? Yeah. So the other way is if you're sitting and you kick your foot outward. Yeah. So if instead of crossing your leg, you switch and go out. Kind of squat there like a kid. Yeah, the, the W, which they say don't do anymore, yeah. right? <laughs> bad for the hips. But try that, and you will see that you can't move your ankle that much. Got it's it. like 15 or 20 typically. Got and it. yet we expect in the golf swing um, around 35 degrees. Got so it. if it can't move 35 degrees, where is it going to pick up? Somewhere compensation somewhere. Got the it. knee gets torqued. Uh, your low back, because in the yeah. back rotation, you don't have a lot of rotation, right? Yeah. So it could affect from the hip up, like you work neck down. Oh, yeah. We yeah. work hip so up. So a good field way. test someone could do to check themselves would be to what, lie on the ground and check these motions with their hips? Yeah. Or, you know what I mean? Or if you're listening to this uh, uh, or watching this video, just sit. Can you cross your leg pretty easily like that? Drop mm -hmm. your hip. That's pretty good. And then if you're sitting, just try to turn your hip out with the video you can't see, but I do yeah. have this video up on YouTube oh, uh, to yeah. check it out. Um, simple well, we test link, that you can do it. What is it you can verbally tell us and then we can link it up to the video later. Where do they go to check that So test? on YouTube, you can type in Dulac Physical Therapy and Golf or go to my website, which is dulacphysicaltherapyandgolf.com and the links will hook you up. Great. Plus I have, uh, I think, before my website gets revamped, I think the videos are up there right now. Great. Yeah. Um, so you can check that out to see how you can test yourself. Yeah. So that's but. an important one. And I think I'm with you, man. When I look at the spine, I'm looking at it like a string, you know, mm -hmm. or even I've been, it's so funny in health. You come up with a million analogies, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. kind of like, cause I can't, I can't show you health. It's not like I yeah. can hold it and say, here, <laughs> let me, let me show you health. Yeah. And so with, with all these things, I think of different analogies for patients, but it's, it's almost, a, it, I used to explain it like a string, and now I'm almost thinking of it like a telephone cord, but again, that's outdated. Now we have cellulars <laughs> and wireless, so it's like a, like, a, like a power cable. You know how they get all bound up, mm -hmm. you know? And you almost need to like unplug the one end or the other end so that the whole thing can uncoil, you mm -hmm. know? And so I look at the spine the same way, where we have all these joints and muscles and ligaments around there, and it's usually either an unstable top mm -hmm. or a stiff or unstable bottom. Yeah. And it's like if you unlock the top and stabilize the bottom, everything in the middle, for the most part, I mean, yeah. has the ability to regain some proper alignment and posture and all that. And so, yeah, yeah I can see where the hips would be hugely important. Yeah. My sister's a physical therapist, like we were talking about mm -hmm. before. She's real big on shoes, proper, mm -hmm. good support. Do golfers have, are there, are there shoes specifically for flat-footed individuals or high-arched individuals, you have to get some inserts in there, you know, because I know yeah. a really good walking shoe you can get, are there brands that are really good for people just to make sure that they have a good, firm foundation, or is that all golf shoes are that way? Um, I'm most, just curious, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so actually shoes are pretty comfortable with uh, golfer. Um, they do have some pretty good ones. I mean, Foot Joy is uh, the most common one out there, but um, there's different levels, just like anything else. If you go to like a department store and get a brand shoe, mm -hmm. Um, it's going to be a little less quality than going to like a running store mm -hmm. with those higher levels. So you just have to work your way up and find what's the best. Um, but if the higher end foot joys are very good with uh, support uh, because most golfers all walk in a ton of a ton on the golf course. Sure. Yeah. Um, some people <clears throat> exclusively walk and carry their bag or pull cart, which is phenomenal for your health, but it does wear down on your sure. feet. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, and take care of yourself. But inserts are a great um, supplement for your golf shoes. Mm -hmm. uh, really can help because you do want a good, stable base when you golf. Mm -hmm. So if your foot is compromised, it's going to affect everything sure. up the chain. Yep. Well, we talked a bit about golf. Yeah. And, and by the way, were there any other uh, hidden, you know, blind spots that you wanted to cover? I didn't want to cut you yeah, off. Awesome. The, uh, yeah. I think we went over a couple. Two. Did you have? Yeah, a we did too. So we had the hip. Yep. We have the core, which should be stable. Mm -hmm. And the last one, which you probably see a lot of, is the middle back or thoracic spine mm -hmm. is too tight too because tight. we're in this 
um, seated posture where a lot of the bent over yeah. position, right? Yeah. Um, so going off what you just said, like if you have a stiffness in one area and a weakness and you mm -hmm. have to address that, right? You just mentioned yep. them. Same thing with the body. If you take those three segments, um, if you have tightness in the hips, it compensates in your lower back. If you have tightness in your middle back, your lower back's gonna be jeopardized. Yep. So there is, it, when something has to move, two areas have to stabilize, right? Yeah. <laughs> so it absolutely falls in line with what you're talking about. Yep, very, very cool. Yeah. Um, and then, and by the way, with that, um, do you advocate the use of foam rollers? Do you advocate for the mid back there? You know, cause yeah. I know a lot of people do get stiff in mm -hmm. there. Are there specific exercises or stretches that you kind of are your go-tos? Mm -hmm. Obviously, everybody's different and everyone needs to have a professional evaluation. I get yeah. that, but there may be people that are looking or watching this or hearing this that are out of state and that kind of thing. And maybe there's people in their area, but if there's not, yeah. everyone likes to, I personally like to have little things I can just start today with, you know? Anything with that, with yeah. uh, checking your mid-back or working on that mid-back? Yeah, there, um, again, on YouTube, mm -hmm. um, and on uh, my website, there are the, a simple self-test, 30-second self-test, mm -hmm. and then two follow-up exercises and uh, for the specifics if you are limited in those areas. So, cool. um, yeah, foam rolls are an awesome thing, mm -hmm. uh, but I do have uh, awesome go-to rotational exercises that right. uh, can address it within uh, one or two weeks just to free up the body so yeah. you can swing better. Yeah, because yeah, I think that's probably important even for non-golfers just people that like you said if they're at a desk job and they just they're popping and clicking all the time in their back they're just mm -hmm. so stiff and just sitting in one position forever i'm sure these kind of things are pretty pretty awesome and yeah and we actually i did a um shout out to i have a shout out here for shane archie we did some videos and he's a personal trainer in town here and one of my goals is well, i've got a site <laughs> another <laughs> another site that's like on hold and i need to transfer all the stuff for the revive clinic but on there, I wanted to have resources because it's just that yeah. kind of stuff is great. So yeah, mm -hmm. check out Andrew's uh, site there. Um, so let's transition a little bit. We've got a little bit more time here. And one of the things I wanted to chat about was the spine. And, mm -hmm. and we can start off the conversation just with your book. Yeah. You know what I mean? The uh, Better Back, More Living. Um, I, I, you know, chiropractors have been like putting our stake in the ground that the spine, like you said, more living. like the spine as a foundational ingredient to a better life, you know, and it's, my analogy is, you know, let's say you had chest pain, right? And it's crushing, you know, and someone says, oh man, you should go to the physician. You should see what this is about, you know? So you go to the doctor and they say, oh yeah, I know how to take care of you here. Come back and, and lie in this room and now we're going to give you this little medication and you fall asleep. While you're asleep, they do open heart radical chest surgery because you had like clogged arteries, your chest was in failure, your heart was in failure, all these different things. Mm -hmm. You wake up a few days later, you have no idea you had open heart <laughs> surgery, and they said, uh, all right, you're all better, chest pain's gone, you know, you can go on your way, and you're like, oh, great, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? First of all, it's not a good physician because they don't explain to you what's wrong, how you got into the problem, and how you're gonna get better, if that, obviously that scenario never happens, but <laughs> you wanna be educated, point number one. Yeah. Point number two, is the heart surgeon is doing the heart surgery because you have clogged arteries. The fact that you are in pain is an incidental byproduct to a deeper, potentially more life-threatening and, or yeah, a potentially life-threatening, definitely more serious condition, mm -hmm. right? So that same analogy in the chiropractic world, chiropractor has been talking about that for a while where when people have spinal problems, one of the roles and responsibilities of the spine is to protect your nervous system. So kind of like having clogged arteries, if you have arthritis and stenosis, you're basically clogging the nervous system. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. Which is a huge stinking <laughs> deal. Like, like, you know, if, if the nerve to your hand is affected, your hand goes numb, you have weakness. But the point that I always like to point out is like, when's the last time you ever heard someone say, man, my liver, I got pins and needles in my liver. Or my kidneys <laughs> fell asleep at work today. Yeah. It was the most annoying thing, you know? And like, <laughs> But it's like, we don't feel that, but just as easily as you can have a neurological interference that affects your hands and your feet and sciatic pain, this stuff controls your glands and your organs and your organ systems and your, I mean, everything that runs your body is controlled and coordinated through the nervous system. Mm -hmm. So the spine, is a really important deal. It is. <laughs> so, so I, I love talking about spine in general um, for that reason. I think mm -hmm. that yes, 
stiffness, pain, arthritis, stenosis. It's all important stuff. But it just, like you said, more living. Like it dictates the course and longevity of your life. I don't know if you've seen this, but some of the most of the people that I've seen that have the the nasty X-rays, you know yeah. what I mean? Oh, yeah. The stenosis, arthritis, and all that. Two things. Most of the time, they've it's not a coincidence. They've had car accidents. They've played high impact sports, mm -hmm. and they're usually on a handful of medications. Medications, yeah. Because it just the spine is the foundation, and if you've got an unhealthy spine, you're going to have an unhealthy, less fulfilled life. It just mm -hmm. is. Yeah. So when you look at the spine, now I know that that's all kind of heavy. <laughs> so yeah. I don't know how heavy this is, and it's okay because it doesn't need to be heavy. When people first start taking accountability for themselves, you don't want to. We don't want to hit you over the head with like, "Are oh, you doing all this stuff wrong?" It's like, no, it's baby steps. You know. Um, yeah. I love the size of this book because it seems approachable, right? Yeah. What are some, and I saw in here, there was some common uh, causes to back pain and sciatica and issues like that. What are some of the big ones that you found, kind of like we talked about with golf. Yeah. What are some of your big issues that you see in the spine in general? Maybe mm -hmm. similar, right? Mm -hmm. But it may be different. And what are some of the remedies that people can find in this book and where can they get it? But just yeah. kind of like, you kind of go over a little bit of everything. Again, the tagline, yeah. for those of you that don't see it here, natural healing without medications, injections, and surgery. So mm -hmm. lay it on us. What's, what, what can we find in there? What's your approach to the spine? Yeah, so first off, uh, education is huge. Like he said, you have to really understand what you're dealing with. Yeah. So you can pull up an x-ray and um, see, and you take our x-rays, we're gonna probably have some mild changes because of our age right mm -hmm. now, and we have some things, um, but we rely so much on, oh, this picture dictates this issue, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and people don't, they hear about it, their friends and families might have told them about, oh, if you have arthritis, you're going to be like your grandmother who's hunched over, right? <laughs> and it's like, so that's our thought process now. We yeah. think we're going to be like our grandmothers. But first is the top three common causes for lower back pain that we see. Yeah, that's um, true. You hear the degenerative disc disease, spinal stenosis, and arthritis. That's all lumped together because mm -hmm. that's on the older side people will yep. get to. The younger people um, are the herniations, mm. um, the disc issues yep. um, that be pushing out on the nerve nerves. Yep. And then there's a sneaky one, the SI joint, the mm. sacroiliac joint, which where it's the- Pretty important joint. It is, right? <laughs> and it's such a small joint, and yeah. uh, joints, I guess, yeah, right? Yeah. But it's where your lower back connects to your hip bones. Yeah, foundation. It is. Yeah. It's where the- energy the transfer of everything goes to your hips the base of the foundation of your body if yeah. you have a bad connection it's like if you have a house and you have a bad foundation that's it it's going to crumble right yeah. walls going to crack and all that that's so that's what the first couple of chapters in that book super mm -hmm. simple uh we don't use a lot of big terminology because if you don't know what it is you're not going to understand it so very simple stuff and then it also talks about activities that are very common with those diagnoses. Ah, uh, cool, so, things that lead into it. Exactly, so you can identify it early on and then start working on it. So let's just take, for example, um, the SI joint, the yeah. sacroiliac joint dysfunction. Um, so if you have any pain on the one side of your lower back, and it typically is not picked up on an X-ray or mm -hmm. an MRI, right? They mm -hmm. don't typically see that. Yeah. Um, so if you have problems getting in and out of a car, maybe standing up out of a, mm -hmm. um, a chair or rolling in bed, mm -hmm. and you have that localized low back pain on the one side, um, then you could have a sacroiliac joint dysfunction, mm -hmm. right? So that just helps you identify. Then in the back of the book, there are three of the top best exercises to do. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people would love to stretch that. They try to stretch it, stretch it, mm -hmm. stretch it. And actually, you want to strengthen it. Mm. You want that stability down in the lower back Got to it. support it so when you roll, you don't shear yeah. or put stress on that SI joint. Great. So we have uh, three exercises for every common cause. Mm -hmm. um, so you can just jump start it and help you identify what's going on with your lower back without needing to go get an x-ray or an injection or get mm -hmm. medications and those kind of things. That's great. And I would say, you know, a couple things I think are important. Number one, you know, when you start getting 
the um, radiating traveling pain, all the, and I should probably, but the, all these videos, <clears throat> none of this is designed to diagnose or treat you, right? So if you think you're having a chronic issue that's getting worse, you got to see a professional about that. Um, but one of the hallmarks of, of a tight SI, these muscles, or a, or a hypermobile one, mm -hmm. the sciatic is the pain down the back of the thigh, right? Mm -hmm. Where if it's coming from the discs, it's more kind of wraps around into the knee joint, you know what I mean? Kind of spirals down if it's an L5 kind of disc bulge, things like that. It gets a little tricky because sometimes you get a disc bulge. It causes sciatica, the pain down the leg. Um, but one thing I... I uh, the other thing I want to say about arthritis, because I think this is huge. Like a lot of people, like you said, and I think actually there's something I don't talk about enough, which is you, I think the phrase is you miss the forest for the trees. When people are given the diagnosis, it's like, okay, this is what I have and I got to treat this. But they never really look at the big picture and how it came about yeah. and what the long-term potential is of restoration, you know? Mm -hmm. And I need to work on that a bit better. I think that's a very, very, very important. Um, but the main thing I think that really gets in people's way is when they're told they have stenosis or arthritis or a bulging disc. It's kind of like, I have this. Like it's a permanent mm -hmm. tattoo. Like, no, no, that's just <laughs> yeah. my arthritis. Like in other words, it's not gonna get any better. Mm -hmm. And that drives me crazy. And, and here's my, my analogy to that. I'd be curious to think what your thoughts are and hopefully it helps some people that think, no, no, you can't help me. I've got a bulging disc. Or no, no, you can't help me. I have stenosis. Or no, no, you can't help me. I have arthritis. It's like, no, here's a little bit of a friendly, I love you, but here's a reality check. <laughs> um, the joints of your spine are like the treads on your tires. And they're designed for a certain amount of mileage, right? Like, like you said, you're gonna have some wear and tear over the course of your life, that's natural. But theoretically, if you do your job right, it should last you 80 to 100 years. Like, mm -hmm. your spine should be healthy. My grandfather, again, playing golf his whole life, he had one of the best looking spines for an 80 year old. Yeah. I took his x-rays, he lived in 97. <laughs> he lived in 97. And one of the recipes, I believe, is that he had a judicious and litigious exercise regimen mm -hmm. every day, walking two miles, played golf. Like, he took care of his spine and it lasted him 97 stinking That's years, awesome. you know yeah. what I mean? So, so you have a lifespan. Now what happens in your tires, again, going back to the tread analogy here, you're driving down the road, you hit a pothole, boom. Your tires get jammed out of alignment, right? Mm -hmm. So now what does your car do? It kind of shakes a little bit. If you hate, take your hands off, I don't know if you've ever done this as a kid when you had <laughs> steer, alignment issues. I did because we had beater cars and we just drove them. If you take your hands off the wheel, all of a sudden your car like <laughs> comes off the road and you gotta, you gotta fight to okay. keep it in alignment, you know? Um, and then what usually happens if you're stubborn and poor like I was as a kid, is you just drive it until the tread shows, <laughs> you know? Like, yeah. It gets so bad, you go to the mechanic and you know, you got the wires showing through, it's just it's terrible, right? It's just horrible. And, and now, here's the analogy. You got your body, right? And you're in a car accident or you're, you're in a, you have a serious fall or a concussion, you know, and your spine is knocked literally out of alignment, mm -hmm. literally out of alignment. And in the beginning, you just walk on it, and you just, you, 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 you're, you're, again, you imagine the hips and how much weight they take, and your shoulders, and you're just grinding this thing until it starts to create pain, interferes with your life. You mm -hmm. go to the doctor, and they say, you've got arthritis. Yeah. Just like the mechanic <laughs> says, you've got poor alignment. Yeah. Now, here's where the, the, the difference is in intervention. A lot of the times, like the book is saying here, some, unfortunately, what do we do for it? Nothing. Mm -hmm. We take a medication to kill the pain or inje cortisone injection, mm -hmm. or we just replace the dang thing. And it's kind of like if you were to go to the mechanic and they say, yeah, you're out of alignment. Here's some duct tape <laughs> for the alignment. Here, I'm going to give you a new tire. That's the yeah. surgery. I'm going to yeah. give you a new tire, but they don't fix your alignment. Yeah. It's going to come right yeah, back. And then on the patient end, it would, can you imagine if you told the mechanic, no, no, I know what's wrong with my tire you can't fix, or I know what's wrong with my shaky car, it's my tire. I've got a bad tire. It's like, well, yeah, you do. I mean, you have arthritis, but why? Yeah. What's the bigger picture here? Exactly. Can we correct it? And I would just say one other thing to that analogy I think that plays to be true is that if we put your tires back in alignment, like as a mechanic, right, your ride will be smoother you will not feel it as much. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at the tire, yes, it's still worn, but now you're not gonna feel it as much. It's gonna last you longer, that mm -hmm. tread. And that's how I feel about the spine. 
when people come in with arthritis, it's like, yes, there's arthritis. But if we can stabilize your spine, mm -hmm. stabilize your yeah. hips, restore alignment from the top down, work on these things, yes, you may still have arthritis, but you may, your quality of life mm -hmm. may go through the roof. You know, I think that's yeah. super important. I really like that analogy. And, um, Feel free to steal it. <laughs> I, I probably will, um, because I think that's awesome. And, and this thing is also, true, I'm going to add to that is Please do. Yeah. when you have tires, you wear it out. Mm -hmm. What do you do? You rotate your tires yeah. so they wear evenly, right? So you yeah. go get them checked out. Mm -hmm. So why not, like, our bodies, and that's something I also do on oh, the side. It's like, headed, yeah. um, so I also do that. If you feel like you have a limitation or you have a goal set, mm -hmm. um, why not get checked out physically yeah. before you do it, right? Because yeah. you... You know the body, you can assess it, see what if you're a little yep. out. Same thing for me, it's like find out a muscle imbalances yep. or limitations yep. before it happens, right? Yeah. So we 100%. go to um, Dennis mm -hmm. twice a year to get mm -hmm. our teeth cleaned, right? Yep. We go to, um, we get our cars inspected yep. because well, they tell us we have to too, right. but yeah. also make sure they're safe, right? Yeah. Um, we go get a physical from a family doctor, but yeah. that's a very gentle like overall approach, mm -hmm. 15 minute, check the reflexes and your blood pressure and heart rate, but take a look at like the inside approach yeah. to it to prevent anything bad from happening. Um, why, not do we, why don't we do that yeah, more let's, often? Let's do this. Let's end our discussion with a conversation around how people can self, now we would all like, all of us as providers would like for the community to be very proactive and mm -hmm. to do what Andrew just said. Just make it a commitment to get checked out at least once a year. You know what I mean? If not yeah. twice a year. Um, but let's talk about some of the things that people can do at home, some of the symptoms, some of the signs and indicators that they could do to see if they think they are out of alignment, if they are out of balance. You know what I mean? If they do have an instability, you know, mm -hmm. popping, clicking, all that kind of stuff. I always tell people that's a sign of instability. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If your joints are moving too much, you're going to be popping and clicking, and that's one of them. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll give a couple, and then Andrew can give a couple. Mm -hmm. Just the, I think this is so important because you nailed it on the head to get in there before it becomes a problem. Oh, my gosh. What does mm -hmm. it say? That an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of gold, something mm -hmm. like that? Or a pound, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of uh, treatment? Something like that. Like, if you prevent it, it, it pays in dividends. Yeah. Because when, when you wait... It's like, it's like the check engine light, going back to the car analogies. If you just put black tape over it, and then the engine blows up in your face, you know what I mean? You, it, it's going to cost you a lot more in your time and money to have crisis management than just to get checked out early, get these problems balanced out first. Um, have you ever, I'm curious, have you ever done this in your world where you have people stand on, and I don't even do it anymore in our clinic, but I've done it in the past and I think it's pretty cool, where people stand on two bathroom scales? Or like on, on a Nintendo Wii Fit board, yeah. and see if they're carrying their weight evenly. Yeah. You ever do that? Squatting. Or you ever I, I, that? I, squatting's a big one. Okay, um, I do it with that. So put two scales down, mm -hmm. and you're especially after surgeries mm -hmm. to see if there's imbalance. But like just normal stuff. But like, do it while squatting. While you're squatting. Yeah. Interesting. Because see, I look at it just just standing, yeah. you know, just posturally. But when you're doing it, you're actually mechanically activating the body to see how it carries the load. And yeah. Interesting. Uh, that, yeah. That's a, I mean, just standing is the first step part of it. But mm -hmm. then squatting, like if we're going to lift something, mm -hmm. if we go down, are we putting all our weight and then it starts working on the ground up to the spine and putting yeah. a little bit oh, of sure. lateral shift on it, putting a little bit more um, pressure on the spine. What well, does that cause mm -hmm. issues? You know, those kind of things. But uh, yeah, I love that test. Super simple, two scales. Stand on it. Stand on it. You should it. be, I would say, within 5 to 10 pounds. If people are exceeding 10 pounds, for crying out loud, it may not seem like a lot, but you do that over 10 years, 20 years, you're going to wear out that, that mm -hmm. knee. It's like, that's always a funny thing. I remember a mentor of mine once saying, he's like, why do people get one knee replaced? Like, why isn't it both? Yeah. You know what I mean? Why is it one hip? Why isn't it both? And it's these imbalances in our spine over time. Another imbalance is, this is kind of a fun one, is have someone, you can do this on your kids too. I think this is great because people say, kids? It's like, yes, kids. Have you seen the birth process? It is traumatic on their spine. Have you seen what they do to themselves when they learn how to ride bikes and climb trees? Have you seen the sports that these kids are playing at a high intensity level now? Mm -hmm. I mean, kids are playing intense. Um, so yes, get these kids checked. And one of the ways you can do, do it is have your kid, or you can do this yourself, have a spouse, or you do it in front of a mirror. Just, you know, you march in place, you wiggle around, you relax, you know, and you just stand. And you don't tell them what you're doing, but here are the points that I look at. Um, I look at the corner of the eyes. Like if you're wearing glasses, that should be level. 
or the ears, right? They should be plumb and level. The other, and a lot of times, if you take like the eyes and then you draw lines straight through the nose and the mouth, it makes like a capital T. So that T should be the way you'd see it in a, in a book. You wouldn't want your T's tilted this way <laughs> or this way. That would be bad. Um, and the other thing is the shoulders. Now the shoulders are tricky because they're rounded. Mm -hmm. So the, the cheat sheet, the cheat way is don't tell the person what you're doing. You just have them like, just relax. And then look down at the tips of their thumbs. Because now the hands can sometimes be curled, but the thumbs are usually just hanging there. And if you look at the tips of the thumbs, those should be level. But a lot of times if the shoulders are rotated or tipped, mm -hmm. we'll see the, the thumbs, one thumb's like two mm -hmm. inches higher than the other thumb. And it's like, wait a minute, it's not like your arms are grossly malformed and, and, and out of you know, different lengths of arms. Yeah. It's more than likely that your shoulders are rotated and tipped and it's just a sign that your spine is just tight, you know? Um, any other that you can think of that are just good little flags for people to say, oh yeah, that's probably me, <laughs> you know? Now, um, the one I always do is a squat because we always have issues. Like, can yeah. you go straight down? Can you go straight back up? Nice. Um, I mean, we have to do it on a regular basis or getting out of chair. Can you just put your hands on your thighs and stand up? Yeah. You know, like, yeah. it's functional. Simple, simple you functional know, and things. Then you break it down and go through a lot of different things, but simple things that if you feel like it's harder to do mm -hmm. now than it was a couple of years ago, that, that's yeah. a yeah. point that, hey, you might be getting a little weaker or tighter or something. Get it checked out before it starts becoming painful. Yeah. Yeah, it's like that check engine. Like, man, these yeah. things are not going to... I mean, we always believe in the body's ability to regulate and heal, mm -hmm. um, but if it's something that's just not going away, um, one of the things that I look at symptoms is it, I, I really don't even care what the symptom is. If you can set your watch to it, like if it happens once a day, or once a week, or once a month, or every fall, or every spring, if you can set a time, like, oh, it's not that big of a deal, I only get it, mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. What that means is, no, no, it's in, there's, a, there's something wrong. Like yeah. your body's not adapting. Yeah. It hasn't dealt with that issue yet. So if you're having these issues, even though they may seem small, if they are on a consistent basis, whether it's daily, weekly, monthly, or mm -hmm. annually, there's something there that honestly, if your body can't handle it now, you want to get it corrected because otherwise it will break down later on. I don't like to be fear-based, but it's just the truth. Mm -hmm. And it goes back to the whole arthritis thing. It's not a coincidence. It's just these things don't just happen. They happen over the years. So if you're limited in your ability to move, flex, bend, stand, all yeah. that, if you notice you're out of balance on scales, the head, the shoulders, get it checked out, man. Mm -hmm. And um, depending on kind of your, your lifestyle or where the dysfunction is located, I think both of us provide unique and valid options for you. If you're out of the greater Pittsburgh area, I'm sure we can help you find a qualified therapist, mm -hmm. upper cervical chiropractor, spine, someone in the spine that can help you out. And so um, I would just, I'll, I'll give Andrew the last word in a minute here, but I would just say, first of all, thank you for watching. Mm -hmm. Please share this video. You never know who may be interested in learning more about the spine. Maybe it's a golf person, maybe it's just a friend that's got a chronic sitting mm -hmm. posture in their work. But um, and if you, again, if you have questions, please just let us know. We'll try and help you out as best we can, point you to some resources, uh, Dulac Physical Therapy and Golf.com and uh, YouTube um, seems to have some great ones. I'm going to be checking that out. Uh, my clinical page is ReviveUCC.com, um, and I'm on YouTube at ReviveUC and Dr. Ian Bulow. But um, any last words for folks, Andrew, that they can connect with you or just things that you want them to get out of just conversing and having a conversation with you? Yeah, so thanks for having me on, Dr. Bulow. This Absolutely. was awesome. Yeah. And um, now, if you feel like you have any limitations or if you have some minor aches and pains, just don't push it off to the back burner. Um, yeah. We do it too often with our health. And yeah. um, then it just snowballs and it gets worse and worse. And then you're going through the whole uh, traditional model of getting better medications and the mm -hmm. long treatment. So if you feel like you have any limitations or you're planning to have this awesome 2019 year with a lot of goals and you want to uh, meet those goals physically, um, just get checked out. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, um, if you're in the Pittsburgh area, give me a call. Um, my phone number is 412-437-1798. Uh, we'll chat about it. You can always text me, too. It goes direct to my cell phone. Awesome. Um, email is dulacpt at gmail.com. 
but if you have any aches and pains or limitations or performance, just let me know and uh, we'll cover it. But uh, I just hope you guys have a healthy and uh, great 2019. Thanks yeah. for tuning in. Absolutely. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks for hanging out. And thanks again, guys. We'll talk to you next time. Bye now.